In a factory, if someone sees scraps lying on the floor, you would immediately pick it up. It's a behavior that we've seen and learned through iterations to make sure that we don't trip over it, that we don't comprise the quality of the product. So it's clean in a factory, in a hardware factory, that is. So what does mess look like in a software factory? This engineer ha here, she's frustrated. She's ready to quit. She's fed up with the state of the platform that she's working on. She's not proud. It's got a lot, lot of vulnerabilities and it's hard to innovate. Yet her workstation seems pretty clean. She's got a modern computer and a semi-good chair. So, so what is this? You know, how do we know that software factory is messy? We need to talk about this. We need to make tech debt, the messiness, visible to be able to prioritize it and address it. How do we define tech debt? Let's start there. My definition is anything holding you back is tech debt. And that is anything tech-related holding you back. So that can be a dependency on another team when checking in your code or implementing. It could be the lack of senior developers in a software project. Uh, it could be manual steps. It could be many things. I have been working in many different organizations, startups, scale-ups, organizations, and in all of them, there have been frustrations surrounding tech debt. Product managers saying that we're addressing too much tech debt, that we're spending less time in developing features. Engineering saying, engineers saying that product managers never listen. Product managers, they ask us, when we've done an MVP or a proof of concept, to move on before we have stabilized it. I'm sure someone in this room has felt that. So, I lead highly autonomous teams, highly aligned teams in big organizations. It's hard for one person to see the holistic picture of what the tech debt adds up to from each team. It's hard to see it, it's hard to talk about how to address it. And each team can try to address it, but sometimes the tech debt is bigger and impacts more. It's a continuous battle that we fight tech debt with. It's from every code of line, line of code we write, every check-in, every time we've done an MVP and trying to stabilize it. We're making conscious design decisions to remove or not add to tech debt. But still, it adds up. And I think it's like an, uh, the, the garbage collector in, the, in a Java program. You do small cleanups all the time, but still it creeps up, kind of the, the heap usage. So I believe that every quarter you should stop and make an inventory and make a spring cleaning and remove it so that you keep it on a sane level. But the problem is what tech debt to address because there's so much. So product work is represented on a roadmap. And in many organizations, engineering initiatives is not on that roadmap. It's not visible in the same way. It's still being made, but what is the business value? And sometimes engineers don't even bother to tell people about it because they feel it's no use, no one will listen. So it's kind of done under the hoods. You do it as part of, so you hide it in an epic of a big valuable product um, feature. And I want us to be proud, proud to address the tech debt that leads us to a more innovative organization where we have less risk, more innovation, create a more resilient organization. So we need to articulate the business value of addressing tech debt. 
So let's start. Let's start by asking the engineers in the teams and make an inventory of the tech debt that, that exists there. Let's just hold a brainstorm on a Miro, in a room, post-its, everyone to write down what they see. Well, I think that we're held back because of lack of documentation or that other team. Anything goes here. So that's first step one. Just do that. And before we continue, let me tell you an anecdote. So a friend of mine has an ex-husband who has ADHD. And uh, they were having their parents coming over in an hour. So they decided to kind of do a quick cleanup. So she started kind of uh, shoving all the flowers into the trash bin, hiding laundry, quickly vacuuming, kind of tidying up. And then after 45 minutes, she entered the bedroom where her husband were kind of sorting through stationaries. The room was a mess and kind of all the rooms was a mess. Um, and like, okay, we're coming here, we're not getting to anywhere, but that specific part of the desk was very clean. So this, uh, this anecdote is to kind of, when you start talking about tech debt, it's very easy that you fall into the trap of talking about kind of the first thing that you get your hands onto. So let's talk about kind of that, the law of sorting paper clips, that we shouldn't get stuck in details, the first thing. So we had these, this brainstorm, and now we need to kind of quickly find some interesting ones to start with. And you can do dot voting on them to just see from some reason, some people thought that these were things to start with, and that's good enough and kind of don't get stuck into details. So the next thing, I call this step qualifying the tech debt. And it's about finding the dimensions of the reasons why this is considered holding us back. Qualifying or finding dimensions. So let's take an example. If we have dependency on another team, if that is uh, one of the things that popped up and got many dot votes, uh, we can see that one thing why this is bad is that it's adding to lead time. Uh, it takes time for us to ask them, to put it on their backlog for them to actually do it and then come back to us. And if we add lead time, we get feedback from our customers and users um, soon, uh, kind of at a later time, delayed, it's a bad thing. So it's adding to lead time. That's one thing why this is bad. Another thing is that it, it becomes harder to innovate uh, because you don't own everything, you don't see everything. So I represented that with a light bulb. And then it's also adding to the cognitive load because you don't know exactly and maybe they don't have the APIs or interface. And then uh, I depicted this with a thinking emoji. If we take another example, code written in another language. And it could be uh, someone, some part of the, um, of the platform written in Clojure and all the other, um, all the other developers are uh, writing in JavaScript. So this could be something that holds us back. We, and it could be the individual dependencies that we're only having one or two engineers who can do this, depicting this with a bus. And then less innovation again, because we can't talk about it, we can't challenge the code, because we don't know it. Just an example. And if we talk about these, kind of try to, if you want to take a picture of this, because it's just for inspiration of what are different dimensions that you can analyze and split up tech depth into. It could be knowledge, it could be cost, it could be vulnerability, security, bugs, individual dependency, many, um, many different things. And these small emojis just depicting it so you remember what the discussion was. So the next step of this is to quantify the tech debt. How much, to what extent is this? And yet again, the law of paper clips don't get stuck in details of this. So take a rough assessment, do a t-shirt si sizing of this, small, medium, large, one, two, or three of these stopwatches depicting lead time. So maybe this one is kind of high, 
high impact on lead time. Uh, and then also kind of two light bulbs, like a medium impact on innovation and a medium impact on cognitive load. And then you do this for all the interesting ones, not for everyone, but for interesting one. And now you have like an emoji narrative that can keep you fresh in mind uh, what you spoke about. When taking this to the rest of the organization, you should also just squint at this and see, is this critical for the organization? Uh, is it substantial? Does it hinder the full organization that we can't do this? Because then we should collaborate. So red, orange, or yellow to indicate the impact of this. And again, don't get stuck in details. It doesn't matter kind of, if, you, if it's yellow or orange sometimes. Kind of just make sure that you get some reds out. Then you have this list, and then you have the red ones, the most critical ones. You should probably assess those, right? So take those and talk to the other teams. Take those and make a global inventory of this. Why should you talk to other teams? They might be able to help you. They might have the same problem. They might have a solution to it. They might say that this is not a problem that we should solve. So take this talk and have a, have a great talk about this. So, and avoid sub-optimizations. If someone, if some team is kind of only having yellow ones, like sorting paper clips, and another one is having three red critical tech depth inventory, we should help the ones with critical before we kind of solve our own things. And now that you have the global inventory, let's execute. Let's deal with this. Let's see what to tackle first. And the thing that you need for that is just to also quickly assess, is this an easy thing to do? Is it a low-hanging fruit? Or is it like a three-laptop-wide, really complicated cross-organizational thing? And then suddenly you have sorted the critical ones into low-hanging fruits or complicated things, and you can start sorting and seeing how to address them. So the method goes, try to qualify, talk about it, listen to the engineers, what they say, quantify it, prioritize it, and then execute on this. And when doing this process, it will not only address the tech depth that you have, you will learn in the whole organization what tech depth is expensive. And you will become better at designing new features and architectures so that you will get even less future tech depth of this. So with this, I hope that you will be able to talk about it, feel the business value of what you're doing when addressing tech depth as engineers, designing better solutions for the future. And let's start this conversation of how to do this. Thank you for listening. You can reach me on LinkedIn and in the bar tonight. So let's continue the organization conversation. Thank you. <laughs>